Welcome back Math 30-2. Today we are looking at applications of logarithms and exponents in finance. Now our very first question is just going to be the very basic one where we're looking at just simple interest and how that affects you. So right here we have Millie invests $2,350 at 7% per year for six months. Calculate the or calculate after six months her simple interest. So here we're just looking at simple interest. Later we're going to be looking at compounding. Now, if I take a look at this, we're just going to look at this. It's pretty obvious. We have our interest is equal to the principal amount, which is 2,350, multiplied by my rate of interest, whatever my interest rate, which is in this case 0 0.07, which is 7%, and then we multiply that by the time. Now, it's 7% per year, and we're only going for six months. How many months are there in a year? Six, or 12 months, sorry. There are 12 months in a year, and we're doing six out of the 12 months, which is half a year. So when I multiply all this together, I am going to end up getting $82.25 is how much you will make. That is her interest. Now, the next part says, what is the value of Millie's investment? Well, that is her interest added to her initial investment. So I'm going to put 2,350 plus 82.25. Now that's going to give me a total of 2,432.25, okay, dollars. All we have to do is ask, she wants to know what is her total amount of money she has now. This one right here, the interest was the amount gained. This is here talking about her investment, the total money. Okay, so the value of her investment and the simple interest are slightly different. So I'm going to continue right here. I strongly suggest you go over this part here, which explains compounding and how everything develops over a few years. Okay, so here we go, example number two. We're going, they eventually you figure out through those examples is the compounding interest formula. Here we have Travis borrows $2,000 from his parents to pay off a loan in one payment when he graduates. It says uh, loan payment and he charged 3.5% annually. Okay, so he's charged 3.5% now this one here wants to know, A, how much does he owe at the end of the second year? Well, we're going to put into this formula here, why this formula makes sense. So A is the amount he owes or the amount of money. Okay, my principal for this one is 2,000. That's always your initial is your 2,000 or for anything, it's your initial, right? And how much time your initial is going up. Now his parents, uh, okay, now what is his interest? Well, it's a hundred percent plus zero point or plus three point five percent, so zero three five. Okay, because this is e equivalent to zero point zero three five. So I add that to one, which is a hundred percent, gives me one point zero three five. And well, how much is this compounded annually? Now, how many years are there? There are going to be two years. All right? Now, I put that together. I'm going to end up getting $2,142.25. Okay? Now, it says, if he paid off the loan after two years, how much interest would he have paid? Well, how much interest? This is how much does he owe? So that's my total. Now we're only looking at how much interest will you have to pay. That's the extra amount of money. Now this here is going to be, well we have our 2,000 and we subtract our 2,142.25. Or sorry, we have our 2,142.25 and we're going to subtract 2,000. Okay? So that's going to give me one hundred and forty two point two five dollars okay because we want to know how much he owed original how much he owed originally and we compare that to how much he owes now after the interest let me subtract 
the, how much he has now from the original. Okay? To figure out how much he paid in only interest. Next one says, Travis was not able to pay off the loan after two years. When he eventually paid off the loan, he owed $458 interest. Okay? So now it says, writing an exponential equation whose solution gives the period of time for the loan. Now if I look at this, if he, oh, if he paid that much interest, how much money did he pay? Well, he paid his 2000 plus that much. So my A, which is your final amount, is going to be equal to 2458 My, in, my initial is still 2000 And my interest is still, based on their formula of above, is still going to be 1.035. And it is how many years? That's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out that n now. Okay? So now it says solve the equation algebraically. Let's solve this equation algebraically. Now, I take a look at this. First thing I want to do is isolate for my variable. My variables in this phone, which might be different. But first we're going to isolate for my variable. This here is all my variable. So I have 2,458 is equal to 2,000, 1.035 to the n. And I have to divide both sides by 2,000 to try and isolate. That's going to end up getting me 2,458 all over 2,000 is equal to 1.035 all to the power of n. Now, I look at this here, is there any way I can isolate that exponent? No. My problem is, I do not know how to calculate for that exponent. So what am I going to do? I'm going to log it. Now, I can isolate and bring down that exponent and eventually isolate it. So I'm going to log both sides. And this n here, I could bring down to the front, like what we learned in last lesson. Okay? Now, I'm going to divide both sides by log 1.035. All right? Now, when I divide both sides by log 1.035, I want to have, oh, I'm just going to put this in my calculator. This is equivalent to log uh, 1.229 all over. Oops, it's all over like this, log 1.035, which is all going to give me a total of 5.99, which is equal to six years. So it would have taken him six years to pay it off. So now that we've seen kind of an example of how this works, I'm going to start explaining why the equation works that way and why the equation works so if I look at this here, and we think about Travis and him borrowing money. Well, if I looked at it, he started with 2000 right? And I want to, and every year, it goes up by 3%. So it's 100% plus 3.5%. Now, after one year, we multiply that, this whole number, by this, okay? Then, after two years, we would have to multiply it again. Okay? After three years, we would multiply by 1.035 again. So it keeps on going on. And that's why we say to the power of n, where n is the amount of years, because we have 1.035, then we multiply by one, that total by 1.035, because the amount you make is being built up on. So at the end of two years, he had this much money. Then the third year, well, it would increase based off this much, not the 2,000. It would increase 3.5% of this now, not the, 3, 000, or not the 2,000. So that's what makes compound interest a little bit more challenging. And it's kind of nice when you're getting the money in a bank, but it's not that great when you have to pay it out. And that's the whole purpose of compound interest, and that's kind of how we're going to be setting a lot of this lesson on. All right. Now, let's take a look at our example number three here. So once again, we're looking at our normal formula. And it's saying 
the annual rate of interest is 6% per annum. Okay, so 6% per annum, this is the same thing as saying 6% per year. All right, state the interest rate per compounding period of the total. So now, I could say you make 6% like here per year, but it's compounded monthly, or it could be compounded weekly or by yearly it could be compounded many other ways or it could be compounded quarterly per year so here it's saying it's compounded semi-annually for five years hmm. so each time it's not going to be more than so first we're going to do the what is the interest rate per compounding period well it's every half a year and it's six percent per year excuse me, and 6% per year. So how much is it going to be per half year? It's only going to be 3% per half per period. Now the next part says, how many compounding periods are there in each year? Or per term? Well in this case there's five, or per term. So there's five years and it's compounded twice in a year. So we have a total of 10 compounding periods. Okay, let's take a look at this one. It says monthly for six years. Huh. So we have 6% and monthly, there are 12 months in the year, so I'm going to have to divide that by 12, which will give me 0.5%. Now, we're going for six years here, and it's compounded monthly. So how many compounding periods are there? Well, six years, and there's 12 per year, which will give me a total of 72 compounding periods. Okay? Now, here's a little table here. And I want you to think about this. We're looking at $1,000 invested for five years at an annual interest rate of 6%. Now, I want you to calculate the investment and the interest, whether it's compounded annual, semi-annual, quarterly, and monthly. So right now, I want you to write down here on whether which one you think will make the most amount of money and why. I want you to look at this formula. Think of what's happening. Okay, think. It's always being multiplied by something, right? So here, after one turn, we increase a bit. Then we multiply it by that percentage. So I want you to look at that and make a guess and explain why you think which one of these will make more money. Or will they all be the same? Because all of them are 6% per year. So I want you to quickly pause and write down which one you think, whether it be annually, semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly, which one you think will make the most money, or whether there will be no difference, or something like that, okay? All right, welcome back. So let's first look at the annual. It says, the number of compounding periods per year for annual, well, there is one. Total number of compounding periods, one. Interest rate per compounding period is six. Oh, sorry, we're going for five years, is five. Total number of compounding periods is five, this is five years. And the formula is going to be 1,000. So start with $1,000, multiply by 1.06 to the power of five which is going to give me 1,000, if you plug this into your calculator, $1,338.23. Let's try semi-annually. Semi-annually, well, that's twice a year. Number of compounding periods is two times five, which is equal to 10. Interest rate is six divided by, 6% divided by 2%, or sorry, 6% divided by 2, which is equal to 3%. Well, what is that? That is $1,000 multiplied by 1.03, all to the power of 10. Plug that into my calculator, and I'm going to get $1,343.92. Interesting. Let's try the next one. Compound period, if it's quarterly, well, that is four times per year. So we're going to go four times per year multiplied by five years is equal to 20. 
Huh. So if we have 6%, and we're going to divide that by 4, because it's 4 times a year, that's going to give me a total of 1.5%. So altogether, we have $1,000, and we're doing it 1.015 to the power of 20, because it's only 1.5%. That's going to give me 13,000 or $1,346 and 86 cents. Well, look how interesting that is right now, how this is turning out. Let's take a look at the last one, monthly. How many periods monthly? 12, there are 12 periods. So in five years, we have 12 periods in five years. So that's going to give me a total of 60. So we go 6% divided by 12, which is 0.5%. Now I multiply this out, 1,000, divided by 1.005, all to the power of 60. Now if I, now we calculate this, put it in our magical calculator, I'm going to end up getting 1,348. Point eight five. Well, which one of these is bigger? And why? Was your prediction right? Tomorrow I want you to think about that even more. And I'm going to ask you a question. And I want you to be able to solve it. Which one is bigger and be able to explain why which one makes more money? And then so I want you to think of it also. If you are to put your money in a bank, do you want to compound it quarterly? Do you want to compound it annually? Or do you want it compounded maybe monthly if the per percentage is the same? And be able to explain why the logic behind it. Okay. Second last example. So we are looking at Christine. Invest $2,500 for four years, compounded semi annually, and receive that much back in interest. What was the annual interest rate? So, first of all, her initial investment was 2500 okay and she did this over four years so four years but it was compounded semi-annually so there are two compounding periods in four years which is a total of eight right so my n is eight now we want to find our interest here okay so what was the annual rate of interest? So this interest rate here, if we find it based on this where it's eight, it's going to be for the interest semi-annual. We want to find the annual interest rate. Hmm. And if you look back here, we kind of will create a formula based on how to find that. Okay, because if we look at this, the interest rate comp that we used in the formula is 3%. It wasn't the 6%, which was actual the annual, because it's compounded semi-annually. Oh, sorry, semi-annually is 3%, and 2% and was com and 6% was in the formula, and it was compounded semi-annually. So let's go back here. So let's plug in everything we know, and we know how much you receive is 800, 843. So I have 2,500 plus. 843.26. All right? So that's going to give me a total of 3,343.26. All right. So now let's plug everything we know. So using our formula, well, what is my final value? This should be my final. So I'm going to have 3,343.26 is equal to, what is my initial investment? 2,500. All multiplied by, well, that's what I don't know. It is 1 plus my interest rate, okay, which we don't know. But remember, this is a semi-annual interest rate. It will not be the annual interest rate. Now, how many compound periods do we have? 8. So now we're going to solve this. We want to isolate and solve for that variable i. So first thing I'm going to do, divide both sides by 2,500.
Okay, that's going to give me 1.0 uh, divided by 2,500. Okay, so 0.26. So I quickly did on my calculator. Just double check what it is. Six, and we divide that by 2,500. And I'm going to get 1.3373. today. Now, how do I isolate this part here with the exponent? I'm going to divide this exponent by 8. This is to a magical 1. I'm going to divide that by 8. So I take the 8th root of that. That is going to end up getting me, if I plug it in my calculator, 1.037 is equal to 1 plus pi, my entrance. Now, how do I solve this? I'm going to have to subtract 1 from both sides. That's it. So I'm going to get 0 0.037 is equal to my entrance. Well, remember again, this here is semi-annual. So that's half of the interest. So my full interest is going to be 2 multiplied by 0 0.037, which is going to give me 0 0.074, which is the same as 7.4% interest. Okay? That's how we do that one. Now the next one here, it says, Andrea borrows 7,500 from her parents to buy a car. So my initial is, or my principal is 7,500. Her parents charge her an interest rate of 4% per annum compounded quarterly. So we are looking at 4%, but it's compounded quarterly. So I'm going to divide that by 4, which is the same thing as 1% actually, all right? Which is 0 0.01. Now, when she pays off the loan, she has to pay $785 interest. Ah, so that's her original, $7,500 plus 785 What is that going to give me? That's going to give me a total of $8,285. Now, what are we trying to find out? What was the length of the loan? So there's my answer. Now we have to remember that this n is equivalent to the length of the loan and it's, it's going to be whatever the loan is multiplied by 4. So it's really 4. So let's take a look at this here. We're going to plug in everything we know. So we know it's the final, it's 8,285 is equal to 7,500 multiplied by well, we have 100% plus 1% all to the power of n. So now we have to isolate for that n. First thing I'm going to do, divide both sides by 7,500. So I'm going to get 7, is equal to 7, oops, equal to 1.01 to the power of n. Now, to isolate for this n, what must I do? It's an exponent. I have a variable in an exponent. I cannot make this in the same base. I'm going to have to log. So I log both sides. And since we log this, that means this n that was here, we can move in front there. Okay? That allows us to bring down the n. Now I'm going to divide both sides by log 1.01. Now this here, we're going to punch in our calculator and see what we get. I am going to get 10. So I end up getting, once we punch that into our calculator, n is equal to, I'll just write it out here, um, seven thousand five hundred 
all over, and that's going to give me a total of 10. 10 point something, so it's 10 years. But remember, this is quarterly. This here was n multiplied by 4 is really what this n is. So what must I do to find the actual n? I have to do the opposite. Remember, we always multiplied from before, if we looked at it. We always multiplied this by the number, the amount of compounding periods. So it's 10 compounding periods. That's 4 times per year. So I'm going to have to divide this number by 4, which will give me n is actually equal to 2 and 0.5 years. So 2 and a half years. Because so we have to divide it by 4 because there's 4 compounding periods. So whereas for the interest we have to multiply because we did the opposite. We normally always divide here the interest. So we multiply to solve for the final interest. Here we normally multiply. So we're going to divide to solve for it. Okay? So it's 2.5 years. So I hope you understood this and I hope you have some good questions tomorrow as we work on the assignment together. See you tomorrow.